what the hell's going on in the heavyweight division? I mean, really, where are we at in the heavyweight division? It, it seemed to be very clear at one point, and I'm still fairly, bu uh, fairly bullish that it is still very clear. Stipe versus Daniel Cormier. Seems to make sense. Daniel beat Stipe. Stipe beat Daniel. Trilogy fight. True trilogy fight. One apiece. Dana White came out and said, next heavyweight fight I book is going to be Stipe versus Daniel. Seems like it's done. But no date was ever announced. And the calendar for at least a large portion of 2020 is already out. And the calendar is starting to fill up pretty fast in terms of main event spots. So now you start to even wonder, where are they going to go? When are they going to go? But where are they going to go? And then you get left with the question of, are these guys going to go? And nothing is being announced for Daniel Cormier. And Daniel Cormier has seemed to draw a line in the sand which says, Stipe or bust. I was ready to retire. I was ready to walk away. I stuck around to give Stipe his opportunity. He got the jump on me, and now he, he owes me one. But if he doesn't agree, and if the bosses and decision makers don't agree, that's okay too. But I'm out. Don't call me for anything else. I'm out. I had my fun, and I had my memories, and in all fairness, I really would like to do this one again. But if not, there's nothing else that I want to do. And I take him at his word. That's not, That doesn't appear to be any kind of a bluff or a negotiation on my part, in my opinion, on Daniel's part. That seems like pretty straight talk to me. Stipe is starting to have a little bit of fun with Daniel, saying, you know, go go fight somebody else. I'm more interested in Engano. Now, what I think, my own interpretation, I think Stipe is saying, uh, hey, fair play, Cormier. Remember that time you took my title away when I gave you an opportunity and you happened to get the jump and then you had shooed me out the back and you got and tried to get some kind of business going with Brock Lesnar? Remember the time you did that? Remember the time you strung that over me for a number of months while I sat out? I'm redoing it back to you. I'm going to make you sweat just a little bit. That's what I think is happening here. I think that this is pretty clear. And, for, and quite frankly, I don't think Stipe's over that first loss. I really don't. I don't think Stipe Miocic is ever, anytime soon, going to get tired of beating up Daniel Cormier. I really don't. Stipe sure seems like a nice guy, and he's sure never going to say any of these things, but Stipe, it did not sit well with him the way that went. Didn't it sit well with him that he caught that punch? Didn't it sit well with him he lost his championship? And it damn sure didn't sit well with him that they tried to keep him on ice for a little bit and go in a different direction. And I do think that Stipe has a chip on his shoulder, and I think he holds it against Daniel Cormier, and I think Stipe can't get locked in there with Daniel fast enough. That's my own opinion. I've never asked Stipe those words, but those are my opinions, and I think Stipe's making Daniel sweat. Now, of course, Engano. Engano's starting to become a cult hero. I mean, Engano is starting to have a fan base on the underground that is a very real thing that appears to be... I mean, this started with a spark. And it turned into a flame, and it is now becoming a forest fire. And he may not be a household name, but he is starting to become a, a, a bit of a cult hero, in all fairness. You've got Curtis Blades, who's looking great, but Curtis Blades already understands his lane a little bit, and he knows that he's creeping up there, but he's not starting to talk crazy and start trying to cut the line. He gets it. He fought in Gano fair and square. He gets it. He's had some good wins, and he earned them, and he earned them fair and square. But Curtis Blades appears to get it. So I think we could take Curtis out. Everybody loves Derek Lewis, but Derek was given an opportunity, and he also seems to get it. Nobody's trying to cut the line. The one guy that could step in and offer you some fresh blood is Fabricio Verdum, but Verdum isn't calling anybody out except for Alexi Olenek, which, by the way, is a call-out that he got, so Verdum's off the board. Then when you do talk about Engano, Engano versus Rosenstrike is announced. Who else do you got? And if you're a really smart mark, you're sitting here going, chill, how come you haven't brought up Volkov? How come I haven't brought up Volkov? Because I don't know if his name is Volkov or Volkan, because it doesn't matter. In the words of The Rock, if I don't know his name and he's ranked top five of the division, it doesn't matter what his name is. And I'm not trying to be a jerk to this guy. I've seen him fight and he's plenty talented. But if I can't produce his name for you, I can't imagine he's going to fight for a world championship, which leaves us with a couple of players. And don't forget, John Jones was flirting with this idea a minute ago, but John was flirting with the idea because he had to. Light heavyweight was in a weird spot, and John was supposed to run over Reyes, reminiscent of the fact that he was a 4-1 to favorite going into the fight. All of a sudden, we realized Reyes is a player. 
And by the way, Jan Blahovich, the uh, the Polish hammer, just got the blessing from John Jones last night of yes, I will fight you. Now, ultimately, that isn't going to be those guys' idea. Those guys' decision, rather, can be their idea, but Reyes gets to say at the table. My only point for bringing that up is light heavyweight is in a very good spot, and we don't need to pull John out of it right now. So who the hell is that heavyweight? And then we get armed with one more piece of news. And this isn't great news. This is that Stipe is dealing with some kind of an eye injury. My first and foremost thought is give him all the time that he needs. All the time. I don't care if it's a year. I don't care if it's 18 months. We don't strip him. We don't mess with Stipe. We praise, we thank Stipe, and we wish Stipe well. But when that eye injury is done, I would like to know who is next. As of right now in the way the landscape sits, yes, it is Daniel Cormier. I get that. But I think that you guys also get how fast this sport goes. Light heavyweight was in shambles nine days ago to the point that the champ was about to leave the division or welcome a middleweight up to the division. Now, they're going to have to slug it out between Yawn and Reyes in the media to figure out who's going to get the shot. I mean, you see how fast things change? I understand looking at the pieces and the players that we have now that we let Stipe's eye heal and we get him and Daniel together. I got that. I don't disagree with you. I will just remind you that Rosenstrike is on a hell of a run. And Rosenstrike versus Engano is going to bring people together. People are going to stop what they're doing and they're going to come together when these two monsters decide to get in there and put their mouthpiece in. That is a fun and crazy, on paper, that is a crazy, crazy match that can go in a number of directions. Surprisingly, in many ways, Engano is the favorite in the fight. The only reason I say that's surprising is Engano's the favorite in the fight because he's such a heavy-handed son of a bitch and he's facing somebody that's going to come and stand in front of him. I call it surprising because if you go look at Rosenstrike's history, that's the game he wants to play. This is Br'er Rabbit all over again. Don't throw me in the briar patch. Then he gets thrown in the briar patch and he laughs at everybody and says, I'm Br'er Rabbit. I was born and raised in the briar patch. That's exactly where Rosenstrike wants to be. Is that enough? Is that enough to deal with the power of Engano? I mean, no, not necessarily. But is it enough to give us some talking points, make us stop what they're doing and go and watch that fight? And by the way, if it lives up to the hype, could one of those guys, particularly if it's Rosenstrike, which gives new parody, step in front of the great Daniel Cormier and go in there with Stipe? I'm not making that prediction for you. I am only reminding you, and I feel that I am accurately reminding you Things in this sport change very, very fast. The heavyweight division appears to be in very good shape with some very notable names and the return of the great Fabricio Perdue. So now it's in an even better spot than it was two weeks ago. But, and there is a but, when is Stipe's eye going to get better? Is Stipe playing cat and mouse with Daniel Cormier? Am I right about that? I'm quite sure I am, but I'm not positive. I'm quite sure. Quite sure and positive aren't the same thing. And if so, if you look at the calendar and you look at the cards and you look how they're filling up, where and when can we expect the trilogy? 